All right, guys, well, here we are, finally in the 2021 Toyota Supra. I only have this for a short while, but I wanted to take you guys on a night drive tonight just to see what this thing is like on the road. As many of you know, a little bit more power for the 21 Supra. They've added about 47 horsepower. This makes 382 now. And uh, actually, we just dynoed it at Nostrum Performance in Ann Arbor and uh, it ate 384 at the wheels and 414 pound-feet of torque. So definitely it makes BMW horsepower, which is always a little bit underrated. We've, uh, we've got a beautiful, sleek body, plenty of trunk space, no spare tire. Three liter B58 BMW engine. It sounds like a Supra. It's got the inline six. You guys know all the Toyota BMW situation. People won't stop talking about it. I'm not gonna start. Let's just drive this thing and see if it's a good sports car. Upon first impressions, I think it's going to be. I've really spent only a few hours in this this week. Apple CarPlay connected. We've got a very sleek and plush interior. Lots of leather, all BMW switch gear except for the shape of the steering wheel. And uh, I actually really like the shape of the steering wheel. Not necessarily the design, but just the feel of it. It's a very, it has a very narrow rim. And unlike a lot of BMW products, uh, this actually feels a little, a little bit better in hand than like the M2 that we had recently sure why Apple CarPlay isn't connecting here. All right, here we go. So we have two drive modes. There's normal and then there's sport, which we're in right now. And honestly, just for the purpose of entertaining video, we'll probably be leaving this in sport mode for most of this drive. It adds some extra exhaust burbles, pops. You can also customize sport mode. Configure it. Right now I have it set, the damping set to normal, steering normal, engine sport, and transmission sport. This new 2021 Supra is surprisingly fast. You get this short wheelbase nimbleness to it. The front end is super darty around corners. It kind of squats under acceleration. You get just a little bit of squirm from the rear end when you're at full throttle. And I think it sounds proper. It sounds like a Supra. Even though there's a little bit of uh, that noise being piped in from the speakers. This B58 is mated to ZF's eight speed automatic. One of the best transmissions in the business. It isn't quite as sharp as the DCTs from BMW, like that seven speed that's in the M2 that we just drove, but there is a refinement and a smoothness here that is just fantastic. It does a pretty good job giving you downshifts when you need them. transmission to shift. I'm sure at some point we can expect a manual transmission out of the Supra. Keep an eye out in the next year or so and 
that'll entice some buyers to buy some more Supras. Really, I think that's all this is pretty much lacking. It would be so nice to row your own gears with the way this engine sounds. Let's take it around some corners here, see how it handles. surprisingly quick. I love the tuning that Toyota has done to the suspension and chassis here. It's super sharp. Again, that short wheelbase coming into play. Just a little bit of boost, spool, at low RPMs. I think it sounds proper. Between the, the sound of the straight six and the little pops on the overrun, it makes all the right noises. This steering rack is also super quick you feel just a little bit sportier behind the wheel in everyday scenarios. Let's see what type of acceleration we get. <laughs> Spinning through the first couple gears there. Staying pretty composed though. This thing is fun. It's a fun car to drive. It looks great. It really attracts a ton of attention. You get a bunch of, is that a Supra? Comments. And to be quite honest, not many people have seen this car in the flesh yet. I haven't seen this car very much in the flesh yet. I've barely seen any on the roads here in Michigan. I saw one red car and it very well could have been a press vehicle. And in this yellow, it looks proper. It's a nicely saturated yellow too. It's not that light canary yellow. Take it out of sport mode. We'll just do normal drive here. This car does shine as kind of a daily driver, occasional track weapon, enjoyable GT slash sports car. And that's that's kind of where this falls in, I think. You've got this amazing powertrain, really nice level of power. But there's enough comfort and refinement here to make this a daily driver. You could you could drive this thing every day, no problem. It'd be great. It'd be beautiful. Um, the ride quality is firm, but it's livable. That's not definitely not punishing. Sport mode and sport suspension mode uh, stiffens things up quite a bit. Uh, but for most driving on normal streets, especially here in Michigan with our bumpy roads, I'm just leaving that in normal. I think if I were taking it out to the track, I'd put everything in the most aggressive settings, but this has been a very pleasant car to drive and live with the last couple days. One thing that I'm really impressed with is the fuel economy. It is just so darn efficient. Uh, we've been doing fuel economy runs on the highway and getting like mid-30s with uh, miles to the gallon, which is just an, an incredible. BMW is really good at making these inline sixes efficient. All right, let's talk about handling. Super sharp front end. You really feel that short wheelbase when you're hustling this thing around corners. And 
an interesting thing happens with steering feel. Once you load it up, it kind of goes away. It's weird. You get all this feel through the chassis, and you can get a pretty good idea of what the front tires are doing and how much grip they have. But at low to normal speeds on the street, there's no problem with steering feel. It feels pretty good. It's, you get some feedback through the wheel. You can feel the bumps. But once you really put some effort into it and uh, push it around a corner, everything just kind of vanishes. It's kind of a strange sensation. Uh, still, though, I feel like I can get a pretty good idea of what this car is doing. So, kind of typical BMW steering. A um, little bit of a, an underlying numbness to everything. But if I'm honest, it doesn't detract that much from the driving experience. Sitting in the highway here, eighth gear, you're cruising at just about 2,000 RPM or under. Ready to go. The cruise control works well. The button layout is very intuitive. All the ergonomics in this car are very easy and intuitive. Uh, once you take it out of sport mode, the exhaust calms down. No drone on the highway. It's very quiet, very comfortable, and it's almost serene. You could really do a lot of miles in one of these cars and be perfectly happy behind the wheel. spacing in this 8-speed is quite good. It's just right for taking over and shifting manually. There's not too many gears to go through. It's still pretty fun to switch it over into full manual mode and use the paddle shifters. It makes it a little bit of an event, a little bit more of an experience. This power build is just addictive. It's responsive too, there's barely any turbo lag. Pops and verbals are tuned really well too. They're a little bit unpredictable. I don't think they've overdone them here. This is just a properly quick car. It's pretty difficult to explore the limits of it on the street. You really want to take it out to the track. I love the way it sounds. And that's kind of a problem is that it sounds so good, you want to ring it out. You want to go through those, those gears, but the top a second, chances are you're already speeding. So you have to be careful. satisfying squat when you roll into the throttle in this car. I can tell that Toyota definitely tried to engineer some Supra DNA in here. You know, you can talk as much as you want about how this is a BMW, and it is, but before the Supra came out, I always kind of thought that, eh, like the BMW 335 with the turbo straight six, that was kind of the modern day Supra, and people said that. And here we are in the modern day Supra, and it's not far off. 
anyway, I hope we can get some more time in this car. I would like to live with it for a little bit longer. First impressions, though, are really good. I have enjoyed spending time in this. It's definitely another level of performance for a Toyota product. Uh, someone could get in this. Maybe they've never driven a BMW. Maybe they have. And it's either the best BMW they've driven in recent years, or it's just a great sports car. And I think that's kind of just where I'm gonna end things. This is just a good sports car. You know, it, it's nothing. nothing's perfect. It's not perfect, but it's really well balanced. It offers enough enjoyment and enough fun, I think. And it makes you feel like you're in something special. It makes all the right noises. It looks the part. There's definitely uh, some cool heritage here. Yeah, I, I think this is, this is a proper car. We've already seen some people like Jackie Ding uh, driving these around track, testing them, pushing them to the limits, tuning them. I've heard that the Bosch ECU in this 21 is uh, proving to be uncrackable. So if you want to tune your Supra, maybe look at getting a 2020. That said, when there's a will, there's a way, and uh, people usually find a way to uh, hack these things eventually. Let's get one more entrance ramp in here. <laughs> that second and third here pull, that's what this car is all about. It's just so satisfying. The steering weights up beautifully and the car rotates really well off throttle. You can very much play with this car's balance. pressed to choose between this and a BMW M2. They're very similar, different engines, but they feel like they're equally quick. This is a little bit more nimble and I think it has more outright grip. Uh, the suspension is a little bit softer and it, the mechanical grip here I think is superior to the M2. It's, I think, a little bit less engaging because you have the eight-speed slush box. This is a ZF. It's not a dual clutch. There's a sharpness and an engagement flag factor to a dual clutch that just is lacking here. But still, it's one of the best transmissions on the market. So I don't think it really detracts too much from the driving experience. <laughs> All right, guys. Well. That'll sum up my first thoughts on the Supra. Uh, really, I wish we had a little bit more time in this thing, but uh, that's the way it goes. I will be, be very grateful for the time that I have had in it this week, and I have enjoyed every minute of it. I don't think this is a car to write off. I don't think this is something that should be ignored. As many journalists and many people have said, this is how sports cars are going to be made going forward is they have to be collaboration efforts for them to be uh, a, an actual business case. This thing is fast. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Hopefully we'll be able to get back into this, maybe get some track time at some point. And uh, I'm also curious to see what the two liter is like. 
Until then, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Take care.